Okay, we left off 742, page 742, Chovos Levavos, fourth paragraph. He had given a, an allegory, an allegory that if in, within society, if people help one another, he, people had, each one had uh, animals with burdens on them, loads, and they were traveling, and there was a limited amount of people. And the, if each one would help the other to load and unload his animal, they'd be able to, to deal with, with, with the difficulty of the, of the limitation of number. But if each person is there for himself, not to assist his fellow, and each one would load and unload his animals, it would be something which would be beyond their capacity. So he says the same thing within society. If people are there to help one another and to assist one another, that there are other pr each one should succeed, then society will, will function properly. And he says, this is the concept of Aftolerecho Kamocha, to do whatever you can to help your fellow. Fourth paragraph. He says, but he says, if each person is there only for himself, Kavid Olama Yoshev, the world will overwhelm its inhabitants. Vinichbla Alem of Dosavitorcha, and it will Nichbalo Alem. It will be coupled upon the person, the service and the and the toil and the effort. Because each person wanted to have his own exclusive portion. Even, even wanted to have more than was rightfully his. You know, there's a word from Yusso Salanter. Yusso Salanter was a phenomenal, phenomenal genius. He was once a, a Din Torah. And uh, there was a question, who would oversee the Din Torah? in Rabbi Sol's time and there was a question they needed three people so Rabbi Sol was chosen because not only was he the most the greatest genius of the generation he was the God Lador, and he had the greatest level of experience and Rabbi Sol Salanti in terms of establishing the Muslim movement he had tremendous uh, managerial skills and he writes that as capable of a person is but the only way that person could truly succeed if you know how to delegate because you cannot do everything yourself and you have to bring many people within your orbit and circle and understand what each one's capability is and delegate to that person and give him a level of responsibility that's what he writes and, that's, and he had his, his closest students and each one was different than the other and each one was very capable this, each one of his Talmudim said that each of us, whatever we are we're just a, a piece of the Rebbe a Rebbe encompasses what, what we all are and he, understanding what each one's strengths and weaknesses were, he gave them responsibilities in terms of establishing the Muslim movement. And he many communities. There was a person, Ravitzel Petterberger. His name was Rabbi Yitzhak Blazer. He was the chief rabbi of Petersburg. There was a time, time that our Jews were not even permitted to go to Petersburg. He had to have a special permit to be able to go to Petersburg. Alec remembers. So, uh, <laughs> so, but but who, how, did he, how did he get that position? How did he get, how, how did Rabbi, Rabbi Zul Pettenberger, how did he become chief rabbi of Petersburg? So, because Rabbi Sosalant, being who he was, he had certain relationships with very wealthy Jews, were even secular Jews, who had, a, who had a connection to the Tsar, and understanding Rabbi Zul Pettenberger's abilities, he felt being in the capital city in Petersburg, he'd be able to be the most uh, beneficial for, for, for Klal Yisrael, being in that position as being the chief rabbi. So he put him in that position. Rabbi Yisrael slanted, through his connections, got him the position. And with every one of his students, he placed them where he was placed, understanding, so again, you cannot do everything yourself. So how does society function? Where people, they actually, they assist one another, but to go alone, it becomes overwhelming, overburdening, and you cannot succeed. Okay. Good. Good train. Good. No, no. It should be a schuss for the yard site. Your input. But I, I want to make a differentiation. If you take a look in the Medrash, what Yisra was said was valid, was a valid point, 
but it wasn't valid regarding Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe Rabbeinu's capability was beyond human. He was, he was a superhuman being. But factually, eventually, but not, every, not everybody's Moshe Rabbeinu. So you have to set up a judicial system. The judicial, judicial, not, he says, novel Tebold, you're going you're gonna to wither. Moshe wouldn't wither. Moshe personally is not going to wither. He had, the last day of his life, he wrote 13 Sifri Torah. Could the person write 13 Sifri Torah? We're talking, this, this, is, this is miraculous. His ability was, was, was out, out, out of the ordinary. But factually, what about after there's no longer a Moshe Rabbeinu? You need a judicial system. One person cannot, cannot adjudicate whatever, whatever the needs are. So therefore, we need the hierarchy. You know, my Rashiv Zakhani Varoch always used to tell over a story. Um, you know, the a person a person is someone a favor, one has a debt of gratitude to the to his initial uh, whoever that person was who did him the favor. So the question is to what point this is to respond to you, to what point do you have to reciprocate? To what point? So there was this, this person, he was a collector for a community. And in the olden days, when they would send out a person to raise money for a community, he could travel for years. And only after years, he'd come back with his, his collections, what he collected, his success. And very often, they were high women waiting for these people. This person comes back, he has a sack of gold. When he raised, for three, four years, he was on the rose, he raised a tremendous amount of money. And he has the sack of gold in the wagon, all of a sudden, he's driving, he hears a, a shot, your money or your life dismounts, the thief says, where's the gold? It's immediately, of course, he takes the gold, throws it to the ground, the thief says, okay, I'll let you live because he gave me the gold. The thief's about to leave, so the Jew says to the thief, he says, um, but you realize, do you really believe that when I get back to my community, they're going to believe that I was held up on the way? They'll say, probably buried the gold somewhere. He's going to come back with this story and tall tale. And they'll tell us, and then he's going to go back, recover the gold, and go we'll live a life of wealth somewhere. I have to have some proof that I was held up. He says, do me a favor. I'll take off my jacket, put a bullet hole through my jacket, through my coat. He says, my pleasure. Puts a bullet hole through his coat. Then he says, you know, it's not sufficient evidence. Another few bullet holes through the coat. Okay, puts four or five. Then he says, through my hat, takes off his pants. He's out of bullets. The Jew pounces on the thief, takes back the gold. He says, "You thief! You dirty Jew!" You understand? Where's your appreciation? You have to do what I did for you. Where's your appreciation? You know? So it's appreciations to a point. In certain situations, there's no reciprocation. What, I should give you a pound of flesh? You did me a favor. Okay, I reciprocate. I appreciate it. To what point? To what point? Do I have to give you my life? The same thing. Of course you have to be accommodating. But to compromise my existence? We're, we're, we're in business to, 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 to succeed. Of course I'm not going to share it with you. Right? But there is, there's to a point. And not everything is, is necessary because you want to succeed. It doesn't mean I have to be, be the source of your success. But there is certain things that, as a human being, you should be accommodating. You know, why should you feed the poor? Of course, it's the right thing to do, to feed the poor as a human being. Well, I don't have to be concerned about you. You're not going to die. Your children are hungry, but they're not going to die. Okay. But let's you can, and you have sufficient for yourself and for them. Is the right thing to give them something? Definitely. And if human beings see, of course, you could be in the same predicament. Would you want to be helped? You'd want to be helped. So if you'd want to be helped, you should help the other. Jewish poor. Well, because he quotes the post of Haftor Recho Kemocha. Haftor Recho Kemocha is limited to Jews. Limited to Jews. When it goes beyond Jews, then it, we talk about that's already Kiddush Hashem. 
if we have enough to go around and we have excess, then we talk about the non-Jew, unless, unless it's an exception, it's a Kiddush Hashem. That's dark, but that's rabbinical. Dark is rabbinical. It's rabbinical. That we give to the non-Jew because we wouldn't. What are they going to say? Right? They can say, well, they only value themselves, so therefore, for the sake of living in peace with them, we also provide for them. People mix it up. People mix it up. People. They mix it up. They mix it up. They mix it up. They mix it up. By not. No, no, it's not a. That, it's, put it's not a chiloshen. It's not a chiloshen. You have no obligation. Let. You give him something. What about if? What about if you give him, You give the poor man a quarter and he throws it back at you. So what? But whatever it is, he's he's his expectations more than that. Okay, he may even curse you, right? Okay, that's the thank you. Not the Schiller. Rabbi Schiller from Orsamech once told me many years ago, when we took the first trip, Yad Avram, to, and we spent one of the, so he said in Israel, you know, they have a gemach, free loan. So the gemach, when you come to borrow money, the lender, he gives you the money, and he gives you two small stones. So the borrower says, what's the for small stones for? He says, that, that's for the thank you. <laughs> but after you pay back, you throw the stones at the lender. That, that, that's, that's the appreciation. Because there's always, you know, there's always some kind of issue. You wanted it too soon. You pressured me to pay back. Okay, so you're not happy when you have to pay back. Okay. <coughs> Yes, everything's okay. We have a seam this morning. Chaim is making a seam. Chaim Klein is here. On Shab Mesech Shabbos. And you have Jay has yard sites. He'll be the Baltfila. So we have everything in place for you. Alan, you have an easy day today. <laughs> Steve is here. Exactly. It's not a Chil Hashem. When people look at Chil Hashem, no, because you want me to do something, that's not a Chil Hashem. I'm not doing anything wrong. You understand? If you feel the Chil Hashem, it's something maybe positive, but there's nothing negative if you don't. What? I didn't. My Rosh Hashim Zechariah Vrocha, when they would deliver medication from the pharmacy, he would always make sure to give the delivery person a larger tip. He was a goy. That he should say to the rabbi, he tips me, it's more than the average person. That he should, you know, would always go out of his way to give a little bit more. 